Hey pros, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about CCCA. Now that's the abbreviated name, CCCA. It's actually Central Citrifungal Cicatricial Alopecia. Let's try saying that three times fast if you can. So we're just going to continue using the word CCCA. Anyway, CCCA is a form of scarring alopecia that is common in women of African descent. So typically anyone who has any form of African-Americanism, <laughs> I'm just joking, anybody of African descent in its entirety, uh, and it basically starts in the crown and it just works its way out. And it progresses. It can progress very quickly. It can progress slowly. The good thing about CCCA is if you manage it the proper way, it is something that you can kind of halt. Now, you can't stop it 100%, but you can definitely halt the progression and slow it down so that it's not so acute right away. So today we're going to talk a little bit about CCCA and some of the things that you can do to halt it. Some of you have CCCA or are dealing with CCCA and don't even know that you are. So number one, we're gonna always say consult a dermatologist, okay? Um, find a local dermatologist in your area, preferably a woman. Um, and of course, race does sometimes matter. And the reason why I say that is because um, when you are dealing with certain things that affect certain cultures more than others, it's sometimes better to find a physician or specialist within that same realm. So they'll be more relatable, more understanding, and they might possibly have a little more experience because of their cultural background. So of course, find one as best you can. If you cannot, then find the next best thing, but definitely consult a dermatologist whenever you are dealing with or suspecting that you have any form of alopecia in its entirety. Now, number two, limit traumatic hairstyling. If you don't know what traumatic hairstyling is, let me break it down for you. Protective, but not so protective styles. So protective styles, like I always say, they are protecting you from no one or anything but yourself, okay? So protective styles typically come in the form of braids, crochets, sew-ins, wigs. Those things are things that can be mismanaged and abused, and they can sometimes end up being a lot tighter than they need to be, more traumatic to the scalp and to the follicle itself. It could cause tension in areas that you really don't need it. And when you're dealing with something like CCCA, really you want to limit the amount of tension that you, as much tension as you can, because you're already dealing with a form of alopecia that it can really be progressive. Like it can move really, really quickly by just a change of a hairstyle that really is not suitable for the area that you've placed it in. And typically, CCCA affects the crown, and the crown includes up here, which includes that hairline. So remind yourself that if the crown is weak, the hairline is weaker. So you do want to make sure that you are limiting the traumatic styles, the tension-based styles, styles that are putting just a lot of stress on the follicle or even the scalp. Now, another thing, limit the amount of heat that you're using on the hair and the scalp. Now, when we say the amount of heat, we mean excessive heat. For those of you that love to blow dry your hair when it's sopping wet, if you guys notice from all of my videos, which your girl has officially reached over a thousand videos on YouTube, all of them I talk about the way I blow dry or I deal with my client's hair where I do not blow dry sopping wet hair. It has to be an absolute emergency. And more than likely that client has been my client for so long that we haven't ever had to do a blow dry. So it's not even something that's ordinary, right? So that's not something that you're used to. So you also want to make sure that you are minimizing the amount of heat that you're using from hot tools to blow dryers to curling irons. And you always wanna make sure that you are applying a heat protectant. A good heat protectant that I would recommend is our Mended Frizz Control. This is a silicone-based frizz controller as well as heat protectant and glossifier. So definitely make sure that you're using a heat protectant on that hair. Of course, heat protectant doesn't go on the scalp. But remember, if you're dealing with CCCA, it's not just at the scalp level. It's in the follicle too. The follicle needs the scalp. The scalp needs to be healthy to stimulate an actual follicle. So one needs the other to then need the other again. Okay, so just keep that in mind. 
when we're talking about utilizing heat. We're not saying that you can't, but you do want to minimize the amount of heat that you are taking part in. Let's call it that. All right. Um, another one, limit chemical processing. Now, you guys know I'm kind of on the borderline of this one um, because I know that some people can't deal with natural hair and other people can't deal with relaxed hair. And I'm pro whatever works for you. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot get a relaxer. I'm not saying that you should go natural. I'm not saying that you cannot get hair color. But just make sure that you are consulting a licensed and experienced cosmetologist before doing so. Not all hair is healthy enough to withstand certain chemical services. Some of you, if you're not taking care of your hair when it's natural, you probably would take better care of it when it's relaxed and vice versa. Some of you, you have a relaxer and you cover it up anyway. So what is the point of relaxing it to suffocate the follicle and kill the follicle? So just make sure that you are going with what works for you. Don't follow trends. Don't listen to people. Listen to you and what you need. Okay? Another thing, let's practice gentle hair care. So for those of you that don't know what gentle hair care means, gentle hair care means not utilizing shampoos and conditioners that are really more harmful to the hair than helping, okay? So for those of you dealing with CCCA, sulfate-free shampoos are going to be your absolute best friend, okay? You want to stay as far away as you can from sulfate-based shampoos. Now, there are some sulfates that are required and surfactants that are required for a shampoo to work, but there are also things out there that are considered harmful sulfates. I am glad to say that Elite Hair Care has switched over to all of our shampoos and conditioners now being sulfate-free. So all of our shampoos and conditioners can be utilized to help you for your hair care if you are dealing with almost any form of alopecia, but we're talking about CCCA today. So number one, I'd highly recommend our B7 Beyond. That is a biotin-based volumizing shampoo. Remember, biotin is number B7 on the vitamin scale, okay? So biotin is going to help to strengthen that hair. It's going to help to bring back that healthy scalp and a healthy environment for that hair to grow. It's also great for eliminating or limiting the amount of shedding that you're dealing with on a normal basis. Now, these are health aids, you guys. So consistency is going to be very important when you are dealing with any form of treatment or care or just trying to get your hair back to its optimal health. Every day is going to be a day that you are working on your hair. So it'll never be, oh, I'm trying to get my hair back healthy, and then you stop. Healthy hair is a continuous process. It's ongoing. It's ongoing. All right, good. Okay. Um, make sure that you are deep conditioning. Okay. Deep conditioning is great. We have our deep conditioning hair masks. For those of you who have more dense hair, we have B7. We have Mend It. We have Hair Repair and Restore. We have Moist Repair. So we have enough shampoo and conditioner lines that benefit you in so many ways outside of just being in the realm of CCCA. So I would definitely recommend you visit our website at EliteHairCareUSA.com. Check out our shampoos and conditioners and also take our hair care quiz. It's going to help point you in the right direction of what products you definitely should be using or we recommend you use to get your hair care started. So EliteHairCareUSA.com and the quiz is on the homepage. Now let's talk about what the dermatologist can do. Dermatologists, they can prescribe you oral treatments. They can prescribe you topical treatments. They can prescribe you, and when we say oral treatments, we mean medication. Um, topical treatments, which include steroid or cortisol shots. I'm not a big fan of the steroid shots because I know that eventually those shots, while they help to reduce the inflammation, it doesn't really stop the issue. It doesn't really lessen the issue. It's one of those things where if you're fertilizing a plant with this same fertilizer every single day, and then one day you say, she doesn't need fertilizer anymore, and you stop giving it that fertilizer, eventually that plant is going to die out or it's going to lose a lot of the health that it had when you were giving it that fertilizer, which is what I consider 
um, topical treatments, as well as injections from dermatologists when it comes onto your hair. Now you do what's best for you. Me personally, I'm just not a fan of them because I have seen what they do over time. They work for right now. And then when you stop using them because you think that everything is A-OK, -okay, everything that it helped to grow dies out. So just kind of keep that in mind, you guys. Of course, your dermatologist is going to steer you wherever they need to steer you. But definitely think about that when you're doing it. Um, another topical treatment that you can definitely utilize, though, in between the time is we have two. So we have our Boost Antioxidant and Super Growth Serum. Okay, so that is a Super Growth Serum that you can place on the scalp. It is water-based. And then we also have our staple product, which is the Goddess Hair Repair Serum. This contains onion oil. Um, it contains niacin, biotin, garlic oil onion oil and garlic oil for those of you that don't know is amazing amazing for those who are dealing with forms of alopecia that onion oil and that garlic oil helps to also reduce the inflammation we also know that biotin is always going to be amazing okay zinc is amazing for those of you who have stagnated hair growth so definitely the hair repair serum which is our oil-based serum or for those of you who want to prefer a water base that absorbs a lot quicker, then you can use our Boost Super Growth and Antioxidant Scalp Serum. So you have two serums from Elite Hair Care that are also available to assist you on more of a topical treatment. They can be used on a daily basis. They can be used on a bi-daily basis, a weekly basis. Utilize them, but make sure that you're consistent. Being consistent in your hair care is going to change the game for you. Changes your life changes the hair game. And I have helped over a thousand women with just our hair repair serum to change the hair game of its in, in its entirety for them. So definitely, like I said, check our products out, EliteHairCareUSA.com. Avoid a lot of scratching. Scratching the scalp is a sign of inflammation, okay? So if you're dealing with a lot of itchiness in your scalp, then you definitely want to make sure that you are trying to get or targeting the inflammation that you're dealing with. Inflammation is very common, you guys. It's not uncommon. Even I have sometimes an excessive itch and I really, really need to scratch. But if you're doing this on a constant basis, I would highly recommend you trying out our Soothe and Balance pre-treatment. It contains that zinc and that menthol that's gonna help to soothe the scalp and also lessen the amount of inflammation that you're dealing with. Inflammation is not something that you cure. Inflammation is something that you control, okay? So everybody has a different level of inflammation in the body. Also making sure that you're eating foods that are great for lessening the inflammation. Food is what you put in, what you get out. It's not just, oh, okay, I eat McDonald's every single day and my body's so healthy. I've yet to see that. So what you put in is what you get out. Lastly, you want to make sure that you're monitoring your scalp. Be progressive in how you're handling the situation. Take photos of your scalp every single month. Take photos of your hair. Do a length check. Do a density check. We have our hair care success planner where you're able to literally track this on a weekly basis so that you can see what progress your hair is making. Maybe it's not making progress. Maybe something you're doing is not working for you. Well, you're able to track that through our hair care success planner. It is available as a digital download or you can get the hard copy. Once the hard copies sell out, we will only offer the digital download. But that is a way for you to be able to track your hair care on a weekly basis for you to make sure that your hair is thriving or for you to be able to see what's working and not working while you're dealing with the CCCA or any other forms of alopecia. So I hope you guys got some good information from this video. Please, if you're new here, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Share this video with your friends and family. I know there's a lot of you that are dealing with CCCA silently, and some of you don't even know that you're dealing with CCCA. So this video is definitely here for educational purposes. This video is definitely here to get you on the right track of understanding what your hair needs and when it needs it. So don't be a skumina. Go and share this with your friends and family. And then, of course, you guys, check out my website at EliteHairCareUSA.com for all your hair care needs. And watch the end of the video if you're new here, and you'll get a coupon code to save 30% off. I'll see everybody later. Peace.